good morning. Welcome back. I know many of us are still in denial that the summer is over. <laughs> but I do sincerely hope that you managed to get some quality time with family and friends. And you had a productive, fun-filled, yet healthy summer. Uh, speaking of fun-filled, yet healthy, th that, that sounds a little impossible, right? Maybe not. You know, I was just thinking about this. Perhaps it is all about focus and mindfulness. For example, please take a moment to imagine yourself on a warm summer evening with a margarita in your hand, or in my case, margaritas. OK, I've lost count. <laughs> now bring your focus to that healthy lime juice while being mindful and enjoying the other ingredients. <laughs> there you are, fun-filled and healthy. <laughs> now, jokes apart, seriously, it is true. Sometimes all it takes is to bring focus to positive things, however small, while being mindful of those innumerable blessings that we take for granted. I'm going to confess something. Last weekend, I was all teary, very emotional, full of self-pity. Blame the margarita in my hand. <laughs> because it dawned upon me that this is my last year, the last time I have the honor of serving as the Senate Chair. Then I chose to change the focus from self-pity to that healthy lime juice which means I focused on the fact that I have enjoyed every nanosecond of my responsibility as a Senate Chair. You know why? The reason is you. Each and every member of Cal State LA. Here in the campus, all of us, there is so much genuine care and warmth for each other. Uh -uh. There are days uh, we, are, we agree with each other. There are many days we disagree with each other. But we always come together because what binds us is our passion and dedication for our students. So hands down, the people of Cal State LA are the best. And you already did what I was going to ask you. Give a thundering applause to each and every Cal State LA family member. You know, today, indeed, it's a very auspicious day because we are going to welcome new family members. It is with great pleasure, with open arms, that we welcome 43 new faculty members. They, re they, come f they represent all colleges, various departments, and they come to Cal State LA from across the globe. We've put a wonderful video together showcasing their achievements, their rich experiences. Take a look, enjoy.
our new colleagues a big warm hug to each one of you and a very warm welcome from all of us. Welcome to the Cal State LA family. Will the new faculty please rise? My dear new colleagues, as I look at you, I feel like it was just yesterday I was in your shoes, only to realize it was 12 years ago. <laughs> no, but believe me when I say, I feel a lot younger and a lot happier today than I felt 12 years ago. You know, I do see some question marks on your face. I'm going to pause and I'm going to clarify. I said, I feel young. I don't look young. That ship has sailed because I love food unconditionally. <laughs> no, but seriously, seriously, I really mean this. I am really a lot happier today. I'm really a much better person today than I was 12 years ago. And the secret is very simple. Just like you will, and I did, you're joining an exceptional group of faculty. They are not only renowned scholars, but more importantly, they are the most engaging teachers, and they, they have incomparable dedication for the welfare of our students. They'll always go that extra mile to ensure that our students succeed. Yes, our brilliant and inspiring faculty, our exceptional lecturers are no doubt the foundation of Cal State LA. But this university will come to a standstill without the dedication and hard work of our committed staff members. Hats off to them. I just want you to know, I was, I am, and I always be, will be an ardent fan of staff members. <laughs> we also have a very, I would say, resourceful, because we always have less funds, we have, all, we have a very resourceful group of administrators, and believe me, they have an unflinching commitment to student success. We are indeed blessed to have a very dedicated and visionary leader in President Covino. I've been on this campus six years before he joined us and six years after, and I can vouch for the fact that Cal State LA has indeed transformed, and we are slowly but surely progressing on all fronts. And about all, about all, <laughs> Tomorrow, you will be meeting the most treasured family member, our beloved students. No, they're not traditional students, and that is their strength. Many of them have full-time jobs and varied number of responsibilities, but they'll always come to class with a smile on their face, admiration in their eyes, and an eagerness to learn. The motivation they give us is unparalleled. My dear new faculty, a wonderful journey lies ahead of you. And together, we will not only give our students a transformational education, but we will ensure that they soar and achieve their dreams. Thank you very much. Please welcome to the stage the chair of the Outstanding Professor Award Committee, Professor Meredith Greenberg. Professor Greenberg will present the Outstanding Professor, Outstanding Lecturer, and the President's Distinguished Professor Awards. I have the honor and privilege to recognize six of our most outstanding colleagues. At Fall Convocation, we have the opportunity to hear about the outstanding accomplishments of these colleagues and to celebrate them as leaders in their fields, inspiration to the faculty and students, and to recognize them as the ones who set the bar for all of us. 
The Academic Senate established the Outstanding Professor Awards Program in 1963. Recipients of the Outstanding Professor, Outstanding Lecturer, and President's Distinguished, Pro Distinguished Professor Awards are selected by a faculty committee, all who have received this award previously, assisted by the Alumni Association and associated students. The faculty handbook states that while these awards are to be made primarily for excellence in teaching, significant achievements are expected in scholarly inquiry or creativity, in professional activities, and in service to the campus and community. That describes perfectly the six recipients today, all of whom are exemplary in their scholarly endeavors, all who bring honor and recognition to our university, and all whom are sought after by our students for instruction, mentorship, and guidance. Reading these faculty personnel files and determining the list of recipients was no easy task. The committee spent many hours in reading rooms across the campus with files and CVs and letters and syllabi and articles. And I would like to take a moment to thank the other members of this committee. Talia Betcher from the Department of Philosophy. Roberta Beyer, sure. Roberta Beyer from the Department of Kinesiology and Nutritional Science. Leah Kami Stein from the Department of Applied and Advanced Studies in Education. Ming Wang from the Department of Information Systems. And Maria Ubago from Alumni Relations. The committee deserves a round of applause altogether. Also deserving of thank yous are Jean Lazo Oy and Rhonda Roquemore in the Senate office and Maria Migalski from University Advancement. To continue the tradition started by the 2014 OPA committee, Professor Alan Bloom from the Department of Television, Film, and Media Studies has created a short documentary about each of the awardees. Alan takes the time to truly get to know each of these recipients. He finds details to highlight that are unique, surprising, and totally engaging. Thank you to your online editor, Art Simon, and your production assistant and second unit, unit camera, Aaron Bloom. And thank you, Alan, for the energy and effort that you put in to create tributes that truly honor our colleagues. I would like to say thank you also to President Covino, the Provost's Office, University Advancement, and the College of Arts and Letters for their ongoing support of this program. At this time, I would like to invite President Covino, Provost Jose Gomez, and Academic Senate Chair Vina Prabhu to join me on stage to congratulate and present the awards to each professor. We start with our Outstanding Lecturer Award. This year's recipient is Dr. Jessica Bodo Creed from the Department of Anthropology. My name is Jessica Bodo Creed, and I am a lecturer in the Department of Anthropology. So I grew up in Texas. I danced, took tap and jazz and ballet, and I was on the high school drill team. Shocking to everybody. I read a lot. I was, I was kind of a nerd. Like, that's, you don't end up with a PhD not being kind of a nerd. And I went to Trinity University. It's a really small private liberal arts school. I started off being a geology major, and I thought that that's what I really wanted to do. I liked rocks. And at the same time, I was taking an anthropology class, and I really realized how much more I loved that. So I switched majors pretty quickly. In college, I wanted to study abroad. So I ended up in Ghana at the University of Ghana in Accra. Like seven days in, was walking down the hallway and spied a handsome fellow. Yeah, he's now my husband. <laughs> We moved to Los Angeles, went back to school, got my master's, and then was accepted at Riverside. So got my PhD from UC Riverside. And I still lived in LA, I commuted. And so I ended up at Cal State LA. And I just basically never left. <laughs> I've taught 21 different classes across three departments. My favorite thing to teach is theory because it's such a tough topic. On the first day of class, when I start, the thing that I always tell them is, I'm not here to have a bad time. Like, I'm here to have fun, so get on board. My dissertation is on uh, the ER effect and how 
people more and more learn from media, the medical information that they take forward as patients. So I interview doctors and nurses who work on TV, as well as writers, directors, and actors. I get to hang out on set and I know all the nurses who work in television. We have a friend that worked on The Closer for a long time and I was like, can I please be on The Closer? I love the show, I watch the show, like, help me out. I'm, I'm in two of the episodes. But literally all you can see is like the, my back pocket of my jeans and I know that that's, who, that's me walking by. But yeah, it was fun. I write a lot. I read. I tried to learn how to knit online, but that didn't really work. I don't know, I watch a lot of TV, but the excuse I give for that is it's research. Yeah, and now I have a baby and that keeps me pretty busy too. <laughs> I literally wrote my book while I was on maternity leave. <laughs> the new book is an applied anthropology book about what students can do with their degree. I like the world that I've made for myself as a lecturer because I've kind of been able to choose my own adventure. And some of that is due to having a supportive chair, Dr. Blonowitz, and some of that is due to having a supportive dean and being able to work on projects. Um, I'm pretty happy. She carries around post-it notes. That's the thing. That's the secret to having children. Just hand them a post-it note. Happy for hours. She's amazing. She's incredibly smart. Her favorite thing to do is look at books. You can't be any prouder as a parent than that. Won't carry a doll around. We'll carry a book around. Um, wants you to read books. We go to music class every week. Today's baby's first Dodger game. So we'll see how she does with the crowd. <laughs> Our first outstanding professor is Dr. Mark Balliger from the Department of Philosophy. I'm Mark Balliger. <laughs> uh, I'm a philosopher and a philosophy professor and a dad. <laughs> so I was born in North Carolina. The only thing I cared about my whole childhood was sports, playing sports and watching sports. My dad was in the army, and so we moved around. I lived in Hawaii, and then we moved to Chicago, and then we moved to Germany, and then we moved to New Jersey, and I went to eighth grade through high school there. That was my childhood. My first term in college, I just sort of by random chance took an introduction to philosophy class, and the first thing we read was Descartes' Meditations. And inside of five minutes, I was like, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. As I started getting near the end of college, I started feeling pretty sure that I wanted to be a writer. I knew I didn't want to like go work in some kind of corporate situation. And then I started thinking about disciplines and then I decided on philosophy. It wasn't until I was probably a year into grad school that I was like, oh, I definitely want to write philosophy and be a philosopher. I went on the job market and I got a job at Cal State LA and I was pretty thrilled because I love LA. I was very happy because I had been sending applications to places I did not want to live. At that time when I first came, I was just like, I was like working on my first book, I've written some stuff on quantum mechanics and special relativity theory. I'm working on a, another book, it's sort of a general book on metaphysics and I'm just constantly working on different topics. The classes I teach are usually like something in the ballpark of half MA students and half undergrad majors. I really love students asking great questions. The thoughts that they have about what I'm teaching or the questions they ask can always be surprising because it's always new students and they always come up with new things that you thought, I'm, like I've been teaching 20 years, no one's ever asked that question and yet you asked that, that's really great. Yeah. I love training them. I love sending them off to good PhD programs. That's really rewarding. I hang out with my daughter, hang out with my girlfriend. My girlfriend's a climber, so I've been doing a little bit of that. Well, I still play basketball and I'm constantly getting hurt. I just broke a rib like two months ago. And this is gonna sound really dumb, but 
I think the thing that I have most fun with is writing. Like I love writing philosophy. I feel really blessed and lucky that I get paid to do the thing that I love most. I'm sure you've seen this before, but the thing about Cal State being number one in the nation in upward mobility, it's so rewarding to teach at that kind of university. I mean, it's my whole professional life. It's the only job I've ever had. And that means everything to me. Please welcome Mark Balger. Our next outstanding professor is Dr. Heidi Riggio from the Department of Psychology. I'm Heidi Riggio. I'm a social psychologist. I'm a professor of psychology at Cal State LA. You know, we grew up in Diamond Bar. And my parents divorced when I was young, and we had difficult times as a kid, and we didn't have a lot of money. My sister used to call me bookworm because I was always reading a book. I'm a CSU student. I went to Cal State Fullerton. I'm a Titan. And I'm really the only person in the immediate family to go to any kind of college, and my daughter is the second. And I had a, a professor, and he said, he, he asked me what, what I was majoring in, and I, I was fairly undecided at that point. He said, Heidi, do something hard. Don't do something easy. Heidi, you have to go to graduate school. And they kept telling me that, and I thought in my head, what is graduate school? I didn't know what it was. But they said, oh, do the MA program here, you know, the master's program here at Fullerton. And so I did, and then in my first semester, and it was scary and, and very difficult, the first year of the MA program. And, and so I remember sitting in my car crying and smoking a lot of cigarettes back then, you know, because it was scary and daunting, and I was intimidated. But then I started working on a master's thesis, and I kind of went, oh, okay. This makes sense. Um, and I was interested in sibling relationships. And I went to do that research, and I couldn't find a, a measure. And so I created a, a measure, which was, you know, that was my master's thesis. And the properties of the measure replicated. Other people have replicated, like, the factor structure of this measure. So that's very satisfying. I started my PhD program, and I taught at Fullerton the whole time while I was earning my PhD at Claremont. And then I taught for about five years at various schools. And then I got an interview at Cal State LA, and I feel like by the skin of my teeth, the academia gods were smiling upon me in my, my career. I honestly feel like I have the greatest job in the world. I get to talk about things that I'm fascinated with and things that I love. I'm interested in attitudes. It's particularly social attitudes, group identity, social identity. I wrote a textbook on sex and gender. Um, I've published with students as well, and I get to be with our students, right? I get to be with young people. I've been on faculty policy committee for a number of years. I try not to tell people how fun it is because then they're gonna to wanna to do it instead of me and then I won't get to do it anymore. <laughs> I go to the gym, I go to the gym all the time. I gotta maintain the vehicle, you know? <laughs> I like to run too. So far my favorite run is around the Eiffel Tower. I like to travel with my daughter. That's my favorite thing to do. I like new challenges and new situations. I like teaching, I like writing. I like working on research projects with students. I like committee work, I like the Senate. I enjoy everything about my work. Great colleagues, great opportunities, great students. I can't even believe it. I'm so lucky, I feel very grateful. Please welcome to the stage, Heidi Riggio. The third outstanding professor is Dr. Deborah Wan from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. I'm uh, 
professor in electrical engineering, and my focus has been in developing technology devices, in particular to treat neurological disorders, focusing a lot more now on spinal cord injury. My parents, they're immigrants from Korea. They came to the U.S. with almost nothing. The hard work, the self-sacrifice, and all the opportunities that my parents had created for me, they really helped to train me to be able to do engineering. I went to MIT. I majored in electrical and computer engineering. And then I went to Duke University for graduate school. After I finished at Duke, I went to USC for a short time. I was working for an engineering research center. My supervisor at the time, he said, I think you want to stay in academia. There was the perfect opening at Cal State LA. It was for an assistant professor in electrical engineering with a specialization in biomedical engineering. And I said, that's me. <laughs> My passion, you know, going into the biomedical research field was to enable people to have healthier lives. Last year, I got to work on this amazing project with uh, my senior design team. It was actually for the son of a friend of mine. This uh, boy, he had a stroke when he was 10 years old. One of the things that he needs is a, a sit-stand device. So at school, you know, he has the ability to um, stand up and do work or be sitting, but he can control it with a lever. And he doesn't have this at home, so we decided to build it for him. Running played a big part in my life. I've done marathons where you don't see the finish line and you just have to keep going. So you have to set little milestones for yourself. And that's something that I try to impart to my students. Just keep persevering, you don't see it now, but later in life, you'll start seeing the rewards of contributing to society and making the world a better place. To be able to see students transform, that was exactly the kind of moments that I you know, live for at Cal State LA, is uh, to see the students becoming this role model for other people. Those are the kinds of things that make working at Cal State LA so special. Music's always been a big part of my life, and my husband, Alex, and I both share that passion. That's one of the things we do on our, our dates. You know, we, we play music together or listen to music together and go to concerts together. I'm also a mother of two wonderful boys. We love being outdoors, hiking. We love rain teasers. We'll just read Encyclopedia Brown to each other and try to solve mysteries. I still have a really hard time accepting this award because I know the people who have won this award. You know, I look at some of those people and I see what an impact they've had on, on our students, on their colleagues, on our university. And to be in that same category is so honoring. But I feel the only way I can really accept it is to be able to use this opportunity to thank people. My colleagues, you know, I have so many um, colleagues that make it just a joy to be at work every day. If anything, I, I owe my parents so much. And my husband, who just wants to pitch in wherever he can, just being able to use this opportunity to say thanks is, is what I really want. I'm fulfilling my purpose. This is, <laughs> this is what I was meant to do. Please welcome to the stage, Deborah Wan. Our fourth outstanding professor is Dr. Howard Shu from the Department of Biological Sciences. I'm a professor in heart. I've been teaching at Cal State OA for 15 years. I was born and I grew up in a city in China that's called Wuhan. And then uh, when the Cultural Revolution ended, I was in a high school. My family emphasized on education. After graduated from the college in Wuhan University, I worked for a few years in an institute that's part of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Mm -hmm. So I came to Ohio initially and for my master's degree. I chose Bowling Green State University went on to University of Minnesota for my doctoral program in microbiology. I saw a faculty recruitment ad from the Department of Biological Sciences at Cal State OA that they wanted someone with industry experience to develop a biotech training program. I applied for this position. I was fortunate to be selected to join Cal State OA. 
It's just a great honor to talk about my students. They are the major part of why I love this job. I'm amazed by how these students, they have a lot of barrier to overcome. Many of them work part-time to so support their family. And then a lot of them have gone on to doctor programs. These students are the inspiration to me. They have achieved so much. I'm so proud of them. I'm fortunate that after I arrived at Cal State OA, I applied for several grants and then was funded quickly. Additionally, I'm the faculty director of incubated development and programming. So as part of that, I have developed a bioscience entrepreneurs bootcamp program to support entrepreneurial pursuit. I'm a lifetime basketball fan. I, I, I love to play. I'm not very good. I'm, I'm a little too short to be a, a real basketball player, but I, I love the competitiveness. In fact, I'm part of this group of faculty and staff member that's called Cal State NBA. That's Cal State Noontime Basketball Association. I look forward to continuing teaching and doing research and then to help our university in any way I can. It's been a fun ride. I, I loved it. I have had a blast. Please welcome to the stage, Howard Chu. Our final award is the President's Distinguished Professor. In order to be eligible for this award, a faculty member must have already received the Outstanding Professor Award and since continued to embody excellence in their teaching, scholarship, and service. This year's President's Distinguished Professor is Dr. Sachiko Matsunaga from the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures. Growing up, I played the piano. I played sports um, in junior high and high school. And I was able to save enough money to come study English here. Yeah, so that's how I came to this country. So I attended the University of Oregon. And then the December, my ma mother died. So I went home. Three months later, my father died. I received a notice of two scholarships that I won for the coming academic year. So financially, I was set to return to school, but emotionally not. Yeah, I had to make the hardest decision I ever made to come back here. I went to Hawaii uh, because I got a scholarship. Then I saved enough money to you know, go to graduate school because they offered me a scholarship. My PhD, I focused more, more on psycholinguistics. How could we minimize misunderstanding between two people from different cultures? That's a topic that I'm very interested in. It's very interesting to teach at Cal State LA because you get all different perspectives from, from students. It's a, one of the most diverse institutions in the nation. When I taught business Japanese, I said to my students, you know what, if you want to do business with Japanese people, you should be able to sing a karaoke song. And when I said that, my students said, let's go. <laughs> so we, we went to little Tokyo and went to karaoke and sang together. <laughs> Never thought about becoming the chair. So I took it as an opportunity to build a program, so we applied for a federal grant, received 3.6 million to run strategically important language programs. So I went back to full-time teaching. That's when I caught up with technology. So I learned to use Moodle and I developed the uh, online courses. After the three years of full-time teaching, I was asked to return as a chair again. Yeah, we met 
three months before my mother passed away. He is my partner and uh, being a very nice husband. I really had fun teaching all these years at Cal State LA. I hope that this award I'm honored to receive is seen as the award for all. Here, you can make a difference to students' lives. That's the best thing about Cal State LA. Please welcome to the stage, Sachiko Matsunaga. It has been a pleasure to serve as the chair of this committee and to work with this very dedicated committee. I have been inspired by the work of all of our honorees, as I'm sure you all are too, and I look forward to a very productive academic year. Please join me once again in a round of applause for all of our outstanding professors. Thank you. Good morning. What a great, what a great group of awardees. I mean, I say that every year, but this is just tremendous and inspiring, I think. Welcome, everyone, to Convocation 2019, the start of a new academic year, another fresh and exciting opportunity. Again, we have the privilege of, of educating, of guiding, preparing our students as they create the futures that they've dreamed of. The ability to do this powerful work, it is powerful work, to serve as co-creators pulls, pulls each of you here and keeps you coming back. As faculty members and staff members, you journey with our students for an important chapter of their lives. You work every day with relentless passion and drive, realizing that our students' success rests on our work, knowing the impact of our actions. This year, as we gather for convocation, this is what we celebrate, another opportunity for impact through excellence and dedication. I'd like to take a moment to recognize some of our guests. As you heard earlier today, we welcome 43 new faculty, a vibrant group of superb scholar teachers. They will no doubt do great, great things. And I want our new faculty to know that you are joining a faculty whose transformative dedication and talent is simply unparalleled. I'd also like to welcome our new staff from across the university. Any staff members here today who have joined us in the last year, could you please stand and let us welcome any staff members who have joined us in the last year? Thank you very much. Wonderful to have you here. This year's president of Associated Students, ASI, is Aaron Castaneda. Aaron, I saw you there somewhere. Would you please stand and let us welcome you? Thank you for representing the voice of our students. Uh, we wish Aaron and his colleagues all the best. We look forward to a great year of working together. I also want to welcome our emeriti faculty. We always appreciate and, uh, and delight in your presence with us. And today we're also joined by members of the Board of Directors for the Alumni Association 
and uh, for board of directors from the Cal State LA Foundation. So it's, it's great to have all of you here participating in, uh, in this moment. I'd also uh, like to give special thanks to Wendy Baker, the executive director uh, for the Luckman Fine Arts Complex and her staff for their hard and, uh, and so welcome and welcoming uh, work on convocation. So many thanks to the Luckman, many thanks to Wendy. <clears throat> We also are pleased to have students here who work on We Are LA, the campaign for Cal State LA, our first comprehensive fundraising campaign. These are the students who call you up to explain why you should give to Cal State LA. They're very convincing, <laughs> I hope. They usually call right about around dinner time. I had a call six weeks ago. No, it was in late spring, late spring, so a little longer than that. I really did. Uh, phone rang, hello, may I speak to William Cavino, please, speaking. Hi, I just wanted to call and tell you about all the great things that are happening at Cal State LA. <laughs> we had a nice chat. She told me some things she knew. I told her some things I knew. <laughs> yeah. Where are our students from the call center? Are they here? Yes, stand up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you for all the uh, wonderful work ahead. We start the new academic year with a great accomplishment that emphasizes our impact through excellence, the WASC Senior College and University Commission, our accrediting body, uh, has awarded Cal State LA 10 years of accreditation. Our 10-year accreditation says a lot about how we're doing as an institution. Of the 15 institutions whose accreditations were reaffirmed in June, Cal State LA was just one of two to receive accreditation for 10 years, which is the maximum term. The, uh, the accreditation committee uh, who visited us uh, in March, pointed to many wonderful successes for Cal State LA. It commended us for taking steps to improve graduation rates by implementing 15 unit course loads and educating students and the campus community on the benefits of a full course schedule to aid students in timely graduation. It commended us for thoughtfully using the quarter to semester, remember that, conversion, to advance institutional goals, including efforts to define the meaning of the degree, to strengthen curriculum and learning outcomes in support of quality and integrity. It commended us for demonstrating a commitment to civic and community engagement, as reflected in the curriculum and co-curriculum, including the Cal State LA downtown campus, so thank you for, to Dean Eric Bullard and the staff of the College of Professional and Global Education. It commended us for developing and using institutional effectiveness tools and services to enhance data-informed decision-making. And the committee commended uh, we don't see commendations like this very often during any, any accreditation visit anywhere, so this is a standout. The committee commended our Center for Effective Teaching and Learning, CEDL, as a national model. They commended CEDL as a national model for faculty development with a specific focus on student success 
and equity. And this goes, of course, to Cat Harris and the staff of CETL. You're over here, right? Okay, back to work. <laughs> we extend our uh, deepest gratitude uh, to uh, Dean Karen Elliott Brown and the WASC Steering Committee. The Steering Committee includes uh, Amy Bippus, Vice Provost for Planning and Budget, Michelle Dunbar, the Associate Director for Institutional Research, Parviz Partal Navid, the Director for Academic Facilities and Planning, Jessica Dennis, the Interim Director of Assessment and a faculty member in the Department of Psychology, Jennifer Miller, Dean of Students, Laura Whitcomb, faculty in the Department of Management, Benjamin Lee, faculty in the Department of Technology, Andre Ellis, faculty in the Department of Geosciences and Environment, Holly Menzies, Associate Chair in the Division of Special Education and Counseling, William London, faculty in the Department of Public Health, and Andrew Chavez, our WSCUC support assistants. All of you who are here today and who helped us get this great 10-year gift, please stand. There they are. Thank you very much, folks. See you in 10. Uh, Cal State LA continues, as you know, to hold a distinction which no, uh, to which no other university in the country can lay claim. We are, we continue to be, number one in the nation for the upward mobility of our students. It, it's a good thing. And this is that you know this is not just a bragging point though it is one of the best bragging points. <laughs> it is it really is who we are. We are number 1 because of you, because of what you do every day, every week, every month, all all through the year. Cal State LA is ranked uh, nationally at so many levels in so many places as among our best universities. Uh, for instance, in the upcoming Wall Street Journal, Times, Higher Education, College Rankings, in U.S. News Report, in its Best Colleges 2019 Guidebook, which ranks us among the top public regional universities in the West. And by the way, about U.S. News & World Report, in six years, we have gone up 37 spots in U.S. News & World Report. 37. The Campaign for College Opportunity named Cal State LA a 2018 Champion of Higher Education for Excellence in Transfer. This is really a great one. This recognition celebrates colleges and universities that have significantly increased the number of students earning an associate degree for transfer, enrolling those students at a CSU as juniors and graduating them with bachelor's degrees, a great achievement for us, one that we will continue and grow. We are poised to continue uh, our success in all of these areas. The plan to create a new college of ethnic, racial, and social transformation That plan has reached my desk, it has left my desk, and we are moving forward. The college will be home to the Departments of Asian and Asian American Studies, Chicana Chicano Latina Latino Studies, and Pan-African Studies. All departments that were birthed by community-led movements. Woo! 
And the college will feature a curriculum that includes uh, faculty from across the university. With the creation of this college, Cal State LA will become the premier destination for ethnic studies, scholarship, praxis, and the training of educators. The proposed mission of the college is, quote, to provide an interdisciplinary intellectual space that centers the histories, traditions, cultures, experiences, struggles, and accomplishments of diasporic communities of color, making connections between the local and the transnational. It empowers traditionally oppressed and underrepresented people to engage in rigorous, self-reflexive study that motivates critical engagement, self-determination, and decolonial understandings of the world." Unquote. And because of the founding department's longstanding relationships with community-based organizations, the college will, of course, boast an inclusive network of community-based partners and center a pedagogy of practice in community with local neighborhood, educational, and civic leaders, a perfect alignment with the university's commitment to engagement, service, and the public good. So we applaud the work of those who proposed and are leading the effort to begin this groundbreaking college. Thank you all very much. This is terrific. As a community, we are doing our best uh, to create a sustainable world. This spring, we took an important step by banning plastic straws. You've heard some talk about that in the <laughs> tweetosphere lately. Well, they're gone here. Banning plastic straws, this will be followed by a ban on plastic water bottles and styrofoam. So begin to uh, figure out how to adapt. We'll have help with that. <laughs> this semester, we continue our move toward zero waste with the introduction of central zero waste stations that will be located in building hallways. It's a significant step that will have a big impact. Second Nature is an organization committed to accelerating climate action in and through higher education. The organization has confirmed that Cal State LA has achieved its requirements for the first three years of our climate commitment. This includes the publication of annual greenhouse gas emissions, uh, inventories of those emissions, a campus community resilience assessment, active support of a joint campus community resilience task force, and the development of a comprehensive climate action plan. That, that's all on the web. Uh, you know, look for a comp uh, uh, climate action plan, and you will see uh, pages, no paper. You will see lots of pages on the web detailing just what we're doing and what we'll be doing over the years. So we're a convocation. Convocation and commencement are the bookends of the academic year. Just a few short months ago, and they did feel very short, I will tell you, many of us were together for commencement. I shook the hands of 6,200 students. I am just recovering, <laughs> just in time for the start of the fall semester. At each of our 15 commencement ceremonies, I shared a story or two about a student's amazing success that demonstrates the kind of change that takes place in the lives of our students. Behind each student's story, there are other great stories, on and on. And in these narratives, you, Cal State LA faculty and staff, you are the co-stars, right? You're, you are a great part of the story of students like Sade Meeks, who I spoke about at commencement in 2018. Sade was a stellar student who sometimes 
experience food insecurity. She relied on the university's food pantry when her money ran low. And based on her experiences, she wrote a cookbook to teach other students how to eat well when funds are low. Last year at commencement, I spoke about David Fonth. David was an honors college student who majored in philosophy. He was on the dean's list every semester. He earned the outstanding thesis award, and he was an EOP student who also worked in EOP. Through that work, he wanted to provide other EOP students the support that helped him through his academic career. This year, EOP celebrates its 50th anniversary. So, in that spirit, we will have a number of celebrations here and at the system level of EOP and uh, the wonderful transformative work that's taken place. And we will, as I do today, thank the staff in EOP for your work at transforming the lives of our students. Many of the students I spoke about at commencement identified faculty who provided them with life-changing guidance. Joaquin Miguel Lopez credited Professor Jose Cruz Gonzalez with helping him develop his skills as a visual storyteller, and Professor Lejia Villalobos with helping him find a niche working in short film. Without the influence of his two professors, Lopez said, quote, I don't know if I would have figured out that I was going to do this. Now I can't see myself doing anything else, unquote. At commencement in June, I spoke about Matthew Keels, who found support and camaraderie through the Veterans Resource Center. And this year, we had the privilege and pleasure of having 42 students participate in our first Dreamers Graduate Recognition Ceremony. And this was, for me, quite a moment. Uh, the, the, we had our students there. Some of those students um, uh, identifying themselves as dreamers for the first time. And most of the students there with their parents and siblings. And when we welcomed each of the 42 onto the stage, the parents and siblings came along. And uh, we had a kind of a great group hug happening in the room. Uh, I am so very grateful for the support and guidance that they receive and uh, did receive and continue to receive through our Erica J. Glazer Family Dreamers Resource Center, which is headed by Hanak Preciado. Uh, wonderful work, a wonderful event, one which will of course become a tradition at Cal State LA until we don't need it to become a tradition anymore. So you, you, Cal State LA is, and you know this, you're doing it. Cal State LA is not just a university, right? It's a community that strives to meet the needs of our students and challenges them to move forward uh, with distinction and with a sense of rigor and excellence and hard work, and that's what they do. Uh, our support uh, that for these students exemplifies the many ways in which we try and provide a path forward. When we're guided by our students' needs and our belief in what they can become, we create a climate in which students like Sade, Joaquin, David, and Matthew can thrive in spite of the challenges that they face. This is at the heart of our Mind Matters initiative. Mind Matters is now a comprehensive approach to wellness, from helping students achieve inner well-being to combating food and housing insecurity. Mind Matters is providing for our students' needs. Through this initiative, we're addressing food insecurity 
In 2018 and 19, more than 4,600 students visited our food pantry, and our do donations are up significantly. More of you are giving to the pantry, which has received more than $17,000 worth of gifts to help feed students. In addition, we screened 1,200 students for CalFresh, which is a state nutrition program, and we submitted more than 500 applications on their behalf for this program. Last spring, more than 400 students participated in our first pantry to plate program. This is cooking lessons, right? Or pre preparation lessons. Through this program, students learn how to cook a nutritious meal on a budget, maximizing uh, the food that they receive from the pantry. In recent years, uh, the largely first generation students in our first year experience program devoted part of each semester to helping us think through the Mind Matters initiative and to give us advice. Hundreds of first year experience students have repeatedly offered suggestions for making our campus environment more conducive to healthy practices and effective learning. One request they have eagerly voiced each year is the creation of a garden site on campus that will provide an atmosphere that supports calm, concentration, and clarity. The resulting concept is the Mind Matters Garden of Well-Being, a beautiful place for meditation. Is it up there? Yeah, that's it. A beautiful place for meditation, gathering, and relaxation made possible by philanthropic support. It will embody multiple uses. It will serve multiple needs from the meditative walking path to the plants that stimulate good feeling to the gathering space for classroom meetings, campus events, and student engagement. The garden will be at the center of our dedication to improving the public good by fostering inner well-being. Students also expressed uh, a need and a desire to have a place on campus to sleep. Lots of them were interested in that. Where can we sleep? So tomorrow, we will open the Mind Matters Relaxation Station. <laughs> Located in the USU, the station provides an opportunity to replenish in between classes in our new state-of-the-art sleep pods. Take a look. You notice one of the kids had his phone on in the pod. Yeah. Not ready to sleep yet. So we hope to add more pods, uh, and that will be made possible by philanthropic support, and we're getting to work on that so that, uh, so that we can uh, line them up. Tomorrow, we are also debuting our two Mind Matters well-being classrooms. We understand student well-being encompasses all aspects of their educational experience, including their learning environment. Uh, the classrooms in Salazar Hall include a moss wall bringing the outside in, ample natural light, features that contribute to well-being and comfort, including air and lighting systems. We actually have lighting systems that clean the air in the classrooms, which is nifty. 
We expect the classrooms to be well certified in the future. Well is a building standard, a certification based on medical research that aims to improve health and well-being through the built environment. So uh, look forward to that. Sign up to teach in there. It is designed for any discipline and any faculty member who would like to make use of the well-being classroom. There are two 30-student classrooms that can be opened up into a 60-student uh, classroom. So that starts tomorrow. We continue to provide resources to meet the psychological needs of students. The number of our psychological counselors has tripled, and we're seeing students more immediately than ever before, and more students are util utilizing group sessions. There's a great program of group sessions every semester. We provide after-hours service and weekend service, recognizing that students' needs don't observe standard work hours. The staff of facilities services plays a crucial role on our campus as we work to provide a comfortable environment for students. Today, we opened a new parking structure. The new structure will provide more than 2,200 vehicle spaces, features 36 level two electric vehicle charging ports, three DC fast charging stations, rooftop solar panels, and a smart parking occupancy system. We can tell you how many spaces are left. And we continue to work to uh, update our classrooms and our systems. A total of 64 rooms in King Hall and the Biological Sciences Building uh, that were not suitable for classrooms were converted to classrooms in a project that required coordination with uh, the staff from the Divisions of Administration Finance and Academic Affairs. We have updated the automatic door openers in buildings throughout campus to ensure accessibility We've implemented a system of daily checks to ensure a timely response to any problem. And we are constructing new student housing that will also provide new study and dining areas that will avail be available to all students, not just those who live there. I'd like to recognize the recipients of the 2019 Facility Services Champion Awards. Uh, they are Gilbert Santiago Sr., Cesar Ortiz, Steve Garrett, Himner Granados, Henry Washington, Maria Carmen Marias, Ramirez, uh, Inez Brizuela, Rene Avalos, Maria Lopez, Matilda Mendoza, Adriano Sandoval, and Melissa Serpa. All of you who are here from Facility Services as champions, can you stand and let us thank you? There they are, there's some of them here. This year's outstanding uh, staff award recipient is Elia Amaro Hernandez of the <laughs> Office of Research Scholarship and Creative, a Creative Activities. Her colleagues commended her for having an eye on the shared goals of Cal State LA. And another nominator noted that she has a positive attitude, commitment to excellence, and spirit of cooperation and collaboration. Where are you? Please stand for There she is. We Are LA, the campaign for Cal State LA, continues to move toward our goal of $75 million by the university's 75th anniversary. Uh, the campaign has, to date, raised more than $61 million. So many thanks.
to uh, many thanks to uh, Vice President Janet Dial and uh, for her leadership and for her staff and for her endurance. She just came back from running a marathon in Kenya and uh, came in fourth. We begin this new academic year, unfortunately, against the backdrop of national tragedies. This summer, the nation experienced the horror of mass shootings in three cities and an escalating climate of hate. The gunmen in the El Paso shootings targeted and killed Latinos, including immigrants, sparking deep fear. ICE raids across the nation are destabilizing lives and tearing families apart. The federal government is taking measures to deny citizenship to those immigrants who accept public assistance. From the highest office in the land, we've heard vile verbal attacks against cities with large black populations and against black leaders. And we listened as others defended this vitriol. We read the tweets, go back, and the chants of send her back, directed at a group of women of color who are citizens of our nation and members of Congress. I, with you, have thought a lot about how these egregious acts impact our students and our community. These actions fuel fear, anxiety, anger, a sense of betrayal, mistrust, feelings of being unsafe. This leaves all of us with a heightened responsibility to look out for each other and to care for each other. We have to work together to maintain a community that embraces diversity and embraces inclusion. We cannot use the tools of othering the tactics of divisiveness, the assumptions of ill intent. To do so would put us in league with those who cause our community damage through the use of the same devices that we find reprehensible. If we're not intentional in our resistance to such tactics, the vitriol may seep into our campus and cause even further harm. This summer, the nation lost a national treasure with the passing of the great Toni Morrison, a Pulitzer Prize winner, a Nobel laureate, uh, wonderful in so many ways. We especially recall her advice to college graduates encouraging them to recognize their agency to choose the tone and the language of their lives. To them, she said, quote, but then I am a teller of stories and therefore an optimist, a believer in the ethical bend of the human heart, a believer in the mind's disgust with fraud and its appetite for truth, a believer in the ferocity of beauty. So from my point of view, which is that of a storyteller, I see your life as already artful, waiting, just waiting for you to make it art. In this spirit, Let's work together in ways that sustain our bonds and fulfill our purpose. Let's affirm and declare our belief in the power of education, the beauty of our diversity, and the necessity of caring for each other. I wish you a year filled with excellence and impact. Thank you for all that you do to make this a great university. Welcome back.